Good afternoon. I'm going to introduce the Fair Fighter List project to you today, which is the first initiative of the newly formed International Committee on Open Fightless Science. It is a collaborative project between Historic England, University at Pompeii Fabra and the Spanish Research Council. And the project is funded by EOSC Life, which is part of the European Open Science Cloud. I'm going to start by explaining what FAIR is, what we are doing as a project to move us as a community towards having fairer data, and what you can do to get involved in this project. So starting with what is FAIR, the FAIR principles are considered the gold standard for data, data management and stewardship and are being implemented across many different disciplines. FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. There is currently a large focus and drive towards using FAIR, particularly within European funded research. To give you an analogy to explain the FAIR principles, I'm going to use food cans to represent data. You would not be happy if you went to the supermarket and it was filled with cans that had no labels. Food cans are packaged in many different ways and contain important information on the outside uh, about their contents. The annotations on the labels are important to, to help us find the products we want, to improve the accessibility of the product, so to have it on the right shelf in the right aisle, to have information that the contents meets certain food standards. The labels also often contain information about how to combine that product with others to cook our favourite recipes and storage information to be able to use or reuse it. So that is the idea with the FAIR principles. Your data needs to be somewhere others can find it easily. So we need to tell other researchers where it is and how to get hold of it. It needs to be accessible or at least the metadata does. So ideally shared openly in an open repository. It needs to be easily combined with other data sets, so there must be agreed standards such as methods and nomenclature, and it needs to be in a format that can be reused, so ideally raw data um, with well-described metadata and in a file type that can be used by others, such as a CSV file. The FAIR principles was developed for data management, but it is now used for many different purposes, such as sharing software, educational materials, and even physical samples. It is a simple set of principles, but its implementation can take time and must be considered separately by each discipline, as it can't be applied in exactly the same way in every discipline. So, so that is why this talk is called First Steps Down a Long and Winding Road. So implementing FAIR is a journey. Before I talk more about what we are doing as a project and what you all as part of our Phytolith community can get involved in. I want to make it very clear that FAIR does not mean data has to be open. FAIR data is about making all the information about the data openly available, so the metadata. This means that another researcher can understand what data was collected, what methods were used, where the data can or could be accessed, what standards and vocabularies have been used, and how the data can or could be reused. But as a project, we do want to encourage more open sharing of data. We often hear the statement as open as possible, um, as closed as necessary, when there are conversations about open data. And this is due to the fact that sometimes it is not possible to make data open because it is sensitive data. For example, in archaeology, there are concerns about openly sharing data about human remains or the geographic location of some sites due to concerns about grave robbing and theft of antiquities. There are also considerations about who owns the data we produce. This could be, for example, in commercial contracts where the data is not owned by the specialist or when working on material that is culturally sensitive and may in fact be owned by indigenous groups. There is another set of standards called the CARE principles, which um, was developed for thinking about the use of indigenous data that can be applied more generally to all data. They can be used in combination with FAIR and it is important to consider these responsible research aspects when thinking about depositing data openly. There is also hesitancy concerning open data in terms of the researcher's ownership of the data and ideas and this is often linked to concerns about scooping. This is hopefully something that we can address through training in our community about how to deposit open data using the appropriate licenses 
and also by promoting the benefits that open data will bring to our community and you personally as a researcher. So we can, we can use CARE to evaluate how openly we can share data and then FAIR can be used to make our data as accessible and understandable as possible, even if it can't be openly shared. This project is starting the journey towards FAIR data and we hope that you will all come with us on this journey. This diagram is very useful for thinking about the different stages of implementing FAIR. I'm hoping that I have done a good job at explaining what FAIR is, the very first step on this diagram, and I'm going to go on now to talk about the constraints we currently have and the advantages of implementing FAIR. So within our community, there have been some positive initiatives to move towards standardisation of nomenclature and data sharing. Through the International Vitalist Society, there have been the recent publication um, of a second version of ICPN and also guidelines for morphometric studies that have started to move us in the right direction in terms of data management. This FAIR project stems from a study that I conducted last year to review open science practices in Phytolith research. I looked at a set of 16 archaeological and paleoecological journals in a 10 year period, so 2009 to 2018, and I picked out all of the Phytolith articles that contain primary data. So this was 341 articles. Then I collected data on data format, uh, the reusability of data, inclusion of photos for identification, the description of methods used, use of ICPN 1.0 and whether the articles were open access. In terms of the data, I found that data sharing was 53%. This was any form of data. So this included articles with at least a data table in the text, but the data could also be in supplementary files or a repository. Then I refined this to look more closely at the reusability of the data. So this included full raw data and had to be in an Excel spreadsheet, CSV file or an open repository. This was only present in 4% of the articles. This study does not make an assessment of FAIR. In fact, none of the articles would be in line with the FAIR principles as it is a specific way of data management that has to be actively implemented. But this study shows a clear lack of data sharing and this is hindering the progression of our discipline in terms of the current difficulty in establishing larger collaborative projects using data from different research labs. And it is also hindering our ability to properly validate research when we peer review articles. So moving on now to the benefits, first of all, of open practices in general, um, there is a growing evidence from other disciplines that adopting open practices have clear benefits for researchers and research communities. One example of this in terms of community impact is in paleogenetics. There's been a drive to implement open data sharing practices across their community, which focused efforts on educating students and early career researchers in these skills. This has developed a much more open and transparent way of working across this field and has resulted in turning the discipline from one that had previously had questions hanging over it in terms of data quality to a well-respected community with rigorous and reliable scientific practice. There are several studies that demonstrate the citation impact of making your research articles open access, but also this recent article, article by Colavisa et al. 2020 that um, found a 25% higher citation impact for papers that included a link to their data in a repository. So if we consider the advantages of making our data fair and open in Phytolith research, for our community, it will have a positive impact on the quality of research as fair data management requires data and methods to be fully described and there is more of an emphasis on open data. Therefore, research becomes more transparent and can be validated fully by peers within our community and other researchers. Fair data allows other researchers to know what you have done and with this in mind can lead to greater collaboration. Improving data management means that our data is reusable by the next generation of researchers and this also has an impact on diversity and inclusion with our, within our discipline as adopting these practices means all research will be more accessible to all researchers. For you personally as researchers, I've already mentioned studies that show increased citations 
but it also means for other research outputs. So you could write a data paper to increase your outputs and data sets can be cited as standalone research outputs by using a digital object identifier. More of your work is available and therefore leads to greater visibility. This often leads to increased opportunities for collaboration to develop your work in different ways. And you will be receiving credit for all the spectrum of your work rather than just research articles. So if you want to start now with FAIR and open data, you can do this by taking small steps. So here are some ways that you can start to do this in the next article you publish. So you can make your article open access. So this could be gold open access, um, which is where you pay for the article processing charge to a journal. Or you could use green open access, which is actually free and is where you put a version of your article um, in an open repository. Um, you can also include a fully described method, so in the form of a full protocol um, attached to the article. You could write a data availability statement, so describe clearly how to access the full raw data of your study. This could be by stating that the data is uh, fully included in the article itself or by um, using a, a DOI to link um, to, the, to a data set in an open repository or you could consider putting your data in an open repository and don't forget to give it a license to tell others how to reuse it. So I want to move on now to how this project is going to start to address the training and the pre-verifying stage of implementation. So what we've done so far is we have made um, a community survey to find out about your views about data sharing and other open science practices. So this survey is still active and we need more of you to fill it in. So I will share the link later. We have been building the infrastructure for the project, such as a project repository on GitHub and a website. We're using GitHub as it is a version controlled project management tool for collaborative open source projects. This means that you can see what we are doing because the whole project is completely open from the beginning. You can also interact with us through our GitHub repository our website or our Twitter account. We know that GitHub is probably something that most of you do not use in your research currently, but it's a very helpful uh, research tool to learn. So we will be providing training for this tool along with training and verifying data through the project. Please look out for announcements about these opportunities. We've also been preparing for a fair assessment by setting up documentation about our methodology. The FAIR assessment is taking a sample of recent publications from two geographic regions, so Europe and South America, on all types of phytolith research. We are investigating the breadth uh, of phytolith data that are published um, to look at how findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable it is. We will use these findings to understand how FAIR can be implemented effectively on phytolith data and then draw up guidelines for future FAIR Phytolith data. So moving forward, this autumn, the project has started fully this month, so we are starting the FAIR assessment. We would like to close the community survey soon and then start looking at the responses. The deadline to respond to the survey is the end of September. We're also planning to start reaching out to those of you that have expressed an interest in our survey about getting more involved in this project. We will then go on to offer training in GitHub and in FAIR assessment. And by the end of the winter, we hope to have our final data sets for the FAIR assessment. So going into next spring, we will have the final results and analysis of the FAIR assessment. This is where we will consult you all as our community, as we are bringing together the results of the survey and the FAIR assessment in suggested guidelines. This will then be written up in a data paper and an, a research article with the FAIR data guidelines. So how can you get involved? So please do fill in our survey. The links are on this slide or you can access it through our website. Look out for messages about training for GitHub and FAIR assessment. And also you can help with this project in other ways. So you could help to translate our documents into different languages. You could be an advocate for our project in our local Phytolith group. You could review the FAIR uh, guidelines when they come out or help us to draw up guidelines for author, editor and reviewers uh, on how to write open and fair publications. Um, and we're also looking for members of uh, the standing committee 
Um, so please get in touch with us if you're interested in being part of that. So how can you get in touch? Well, we have a website um, um, which has an email address within it. And we also have a Twitter account. And finally, um, just thank you for listening from our, all of our core team, which is myself, Carla, Javier, Juanjo, Marco and our new core team member, Celine. And thanks also to go to all of these organisations, especially EOS Glyph that have funded this project. And please do fill in our survey or get in touch with us through our website or Twitter account.